In the previous episode, you watched me get stranded on an off-road trail in Moab, Utah, all by myself. As my postal jeep's engine cut out on inclines due to fuel starvation, and as his transmission overheated and lost both reverse and all forward gears. Somehow, both the jeep and I made it off the trail largely unscathed, and keen to keep it things that way, I headed back home. After my brothers departed, I felt really lonely. I had to drive across the country, but Mike and Ben wouldn't join me, and that just sucked. Luckily, this deep feeling of loneliness was short-lived because in the middle of the desert, Eric, a friend from Michigan, began honking in my rearview mirror. God, it was nice to see him. This reinvigorated me to take on the other side of Wolf Creek Pass, known to be even more dangerous than the front side. Readers had told me to avoid it at all costs. And I was going to do it alone at night. But at this point, I knew the Jeep could handle its accelerator pedal being stomped to the floor for a solid 30 minutes. And it did so beautifully. All right, I am about to head up Wolf Creek Pass. And it's probably gonna be dark by the time I get up there. I have no support vehicle, it's just me. Uh, and this is a 7% grade up the Rocky Mountains. Oh man, 7%. We're in second gear right now. I'm in wide open throttle, doing 30 miles an hour. Oh, we upshifted. Oh, trans, that's a bold move, 727. You know, it's, it's a test of brakes on the way down and powertrain and pretty much everything else on the way up. And, uh, and it is tough. This is a tough grade. Holy cow, second gear, downshift again. All right, stay here, uh, car. Second gear is your gear or I will just shift it in there, make you stay there. Okay, look at this, Wolf Creek Pass. We're making it up, this thing. I, this Jeep is just incredible. All right, we're still headed through the mountain pass. It's now dark and rainy, and uh, there's no one really anywhere. I haven't passed a car in a while, I haven't seen a car in a while. After climbing the grade, I grabbed my sleeping bag, placed it over my body, and simply leaned to the side in the driver's seat. Sleeping in 35 degree weather did motivate me to get back on the road early enough to catch a beautiful sunrise over the mountains still ahead. I'm in the middle of nowhere right now. Eastern Kansas, I think. You can hear birds that sound like R2-D2. In short order, the landscape became barren, and I mean really, really barren, with no AC, no radio, and a dead phone and the heat making me a bit loopy, I for some reason became dead set on capturing a tumbleweed. I have achieved a major bucket list item. I am in Eastern Kansas, and I've been chasing this guy for the longest time. He's just too fast every time, but no. No, no, I got him this time. Mr. Tumbleweed, you have been captured. And I'm bringing you home. Oh yes, look at this thing. I arrived in Kansas and stopped in Colby to visit the greatest junkyard I'd ever seen. Darkness fell in the middle of nowhere, Kansas, and I pulled off the empty road into a dirt road, cutting through a farmer's field. I leaned over and slept as owls hooted, coyotes yelped, and the brightest stars I'd ever seen lit up the sky. It was my second night sleeping in my postal jeep. It's, uh... If this vehicle hadn't pretty much severed any receptors that might normally register discomfort, then I might I'm, then I might have said it was uh, it was pretty cold. <laughs> but um, since I no longer feel pain, thanks to this uh, horrible horrible machine that I somehow love, um, it was fine. Everything was fine. After meeting up with a reader, I got pulled over for speeding. The cop let me off the hook, telling me his deputy was a big fan and had been following my postal jeep adventure. The officer showed me a $350 Chevy pickup that he and his son were working on. It was actually the second time I got pulled over. The first time, an older lady had called the cops after I'd pulled up on her street in the middle of the night to rest. Yes, a woman called us to say she is confused that the mailman is sitting in front of her house in the middle of the night, the officer told me, hilariously. 
I'd be pulled over a third time by someone who was alarmed seeing me pull up to a gas pump and immediately fall asleep. Yeah man, I'd never seen anyone fall asleep so quickly in my life. I figured you had a medical problem, he said to me before speeding off. The cops were baffled to find a dirty man in his pajamas, apparently living in a rusty cube on wheels. But they let me go. Quite a few leaks down here. Axle seal over here. Trans pan. It's like there's some cool one getting somewhere down here somewhere. There's a bit of an oil leak. There's a little bit of everything down here. It's like a you know smorgasbord of liquids. Okay, I'm on the final uh, stretch of my 3,600 mile trip from Detroit to Moab and back, and um, I just cannot describe how happy I, ha I am with this Jeep overall and mostly with its inline six engine. Uh, it fires up really quickly and sounds sounds really good and um, on the way back after noticing it was going through quite a bit of oil on the way to Moab um, I found this clogged filter which is like rock hard can't hear it but it sounds like a rock anyway uh, this clogged filter was in the crankcase ventilation system so basically the engine was getting all of this pressure that it was not able to exhaust because of this clogged filter and so it just blew all the oil past all the valves and seals and onto the ground um, so I took the filter out which is not necessary and now it does not leak and it doesn't burn oil so it's a, it's a fine running machine Michigan we are back oh yes welcome to Michigan Project Postal trudges toward Southeast Michigan all right just slept in the Jeep for the third night this time in southwest Michigan, just outside of Illinois, and it is, it's got to be like 32 degrees outside. It is freezing. But, uh, final stretch, back to Detroit. Here we are, returning home. After roughly 4,000 miles, my fleet of misfit Jeeps welcome your new king, the Postal Jeep. An unkillable warrior that you should all learn from. Postal Jeep, you may be the ugliest on, in my fleet, but you are the toughest. I had fallen in love with the machine. It became my daily driver, hauling tires and tools on my way to the junkyard. It even survived being rear-ended by a Hummer. Thing was a tank, but unfortunately, I had too many cars and not enough dollars. You know how it goes. So. I had to part ways with my beloved Postal Jeep. The new owner didn't have it for long because the vehicle that everyone thought would never ever again drive on public roads did wind up in a junkyard. But only after the most epic road trip of my life. Well, so far. So I've got this very weak stick. It's not requiring a whole lot of effort to put a hole in this tab corner. Oh god. Oh man, that's close. That's a glove. What is that? 